and hears me when I call. And Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Where sin runs deep.
Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, he washed it white as snow. Good afternoon. We thank you for uh, joining us here this afternoon to celebrate the life of an incredible person, Melinda Ryan. Your support over the last several days to the family and friends and relatives have been very encouraging and they want to say thank you for that continued support and also ask that you continue to pray for them during these days as they adjust life to living it without Melinda here. And so we welcome you to this celebration service and those of you who are joining us uh, by way of the web we welcome you as well and ask that you too might pray for the family and others as this celebration takes place today. Before we sing the first song, I would like to say a few words <clears throat> from our perspective relative to Melinda. We got to know her several, several years ago. 
And I would like to tell you just a little about her that you probably already know, but would do well to hear it again. From some people's perspective, it's pretty easy to measure success. How much money do you have in the bank? Or how much have you invested? It's pretty easy to use a yardstick like that for success. Those with more are commonly known to be a little more successful than those with less. That's how we're trained to measure success with currency. My son tells me that I need to get into cryptocurrency now. I have no idea what that's all about. Houses, cars, toys, stuff. All kinds of things that we've used as an arbitrary scale with which to evaluate and ascribe worth to our existence. But listen, there is more. There are better measures than hard, cold cash. The Salvation Army in Maryland and West Virginia is not a place where there's a lot of money. The terrain there is much like the green hills and shrub where, shrubs where Linda, Melinda grew up on this island. And the Appalachian people are hardworking and are very friendly, much like they are here on the island. Perhaps that's why Melinda ended up fitting in so well in that environment. And in just a few years in that division, Melinda amassed a huge fortune. Yes, in currency, if you will. If you've taken the time to scroll through Melinda's Facebook page, in these days, you'll begin to see some of those measures. Joy. Joy is a currency. Time after time, you'll read about the fervency with which Melinda loved to laugh and tell stories. More than one post speaks of sides so sore that it took days to subside. Acting out in skits was her favorite pastime. Even at our retirement, handing us, in the midst of all of those Americans, some hard bread and jam jams to make sure that our retirement went well. Everyone has a story to tell, and, and for everyone posted on her Facebook page, there are hundreds more that have yet to be told. I first met Melinda, or we did actually, uh, when we were court officers in Cornerbrook, Cornerbrook Temple, a young girl from La Cie landed in Cornerbrook and became good friends with our son Dean and our daughter-in-law Vicky. And wherever they went, there was Melinda. She was an awesome musician as well. Of course, she's a Ryan from La Cie. Would you expect anything less than that? Sunday after Sunday, she made the euphonium soar in the church. It brought us joy. It brought the people who played with her joy and hundreds of people who came week after week. It brought them joy too. But not joy in her person, personally or in her talent, but rather joy in worship, joy in life, joy in someone making an offering of their very best. And we were there, and we were blessed by it. To, to know Melinda was to know somebody full of joy who lived her life joyfully. You can purchase companionship. You can force obedience, but you can't buy friends, not true friends. And the number of people who would count Melinda as their friend is absolutely unknown. All who met her were enraptured by her love, her humor, and her honesty, drawn in by her effervescent, effervescent rather, personality, 
We all quickly offered her the currency of our friendship. Hey, Melinda, we'd love to be your friend. Everyone was touched by that sweet woman. Everyone was impacted for the better. She would be a lifelong friend, to be sure. She was a consummate friend. There when you needed her, whether the occasion was happy or sad. Uh, James Taylor wrote a psalm back in 1971, and I think he had Melinda in mind when he wrote it. You just call out my name, and you know wherever I am, I'll come running to see you again. Winter, spring, summer, or fall, all you got to do is call, and I'll be there. You've got a friend. Finally, love is a currency, perhaps the most valuable, valuable of all. Let me encourage you again to read her postings on Facebook. You will be amazed over and over and over again at the influence that this woman had on the lives of so, so many people. The young people that she was so in tune with were encouraged to strive for excellence. Her peers were challenged to be everything they could be. And even the elders saw in Melinda Ryan an example that they could trust. But all that influence is only achieved through love. Let me finish with this paragraph. It's one thing to be encouraged to be your best, to try your hardest, to dig in and fight, to work tirelessly. But it's another to have someone who loves you enough to get into that situation with you, to put in an effort to be with you, to struggle when you struggle, to rejoice when you rejoice. That's Melinda Ryan, total and absolute unconditional love. Joy, friendship, and love, oh yes. Melinda was rich beyond measure. Now let's celebrate Jesus as we celebrate her life and her memory. And to do that, we're going to sing together, what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leaning on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace is mine, leaning on the everlasting arms. The band will give us uh, an intro, and we shall stand and sing the song straight through.
standing for prayer. Let's bow in prayer. Hear our cry, O Lord. Listen to our prayer. From our pain and from our broken hearts this afternoon, we call out to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to a rock that is higher than I. And today, dear Father, we look to you. We seek your face. We ask that you will be our refuge and our strength, that you will be the tower to which we can run. Lord, we come with sad hearts this afternoon as we think of a lady that we loved and a lady that is gone too soon. And the void is felt, our hearts are heavy. But Father, we also celebrate the life of someone that we loved who was special, who impacted us, whose joy was contagious, and whose love and friendship meant so much to each of us. And Father, for that today, we give you thanks. I thank you, Lord, for those who have been impacted, the young people, the countless young people who have been influenced by Melinda, not just musically, Lord, but spiritually. Thank you for how she has been an example of Christ, one who has kept the faith, who ran the race well, who lived her faith. And Father, for that we give you thanks today. As we gather here, dear Father, we are so grateful for the reality of your presence because we know that as we walk through the valley of this shadow of death, you are with us. Thank you for that assurance today. Lord, I pray for this family. I especially pray for Betty today, dear Father. God, how I pray that she will know she is not alone, but that you walk this road of grief with her. How deep the sorrow is felt. Lord, I cannot even imagine how she's feeling this afternoon, but Lord, I know that you know. Your heart grieves with her. We have a God, we have a savior, we have a one who has been touched with everything that has touched us. And so Lord, you understand her heart this afternoon. And so I pray that your peace will be hers. Your comfort will surround her. For the other members of the family, for her siblings, for her nieces and her nephews, for her friends, Father, surround them, I pray, today with your love. May the memories that they have in their heart be even more precious to them and bring them joy and comfort in this time of sorrow. Father, I pray that as we gathered here this afternoon, that we might lean on you and that we might experience what it is that you can offer to us at this sad time. Keep our hearts and our ears open to hear your voice, what you're able to speak into our hearts. Lord, help us to hear from you this afternoon. And Father, I pray that as we sit here and as we think of Melinda, help us, O oh Lord, to number our days, to realize, dear Father, how precious each moment and each day is and how important it is that we live our lives in service to you and to love and to follow you all of our days. And so, Lord, use this service of celebration for your honor and for your glory as you use Melinda's life for the glory of the kingdom. I pray this, dear Father, in the name of the one who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. You may be seated.
Well, I'm Major Art Penhale. I'm the Divisional Commander of the Maryland and West Virginia Division. And I want to, first of all, thank you for allowing me to speak on behalf of a very grateful division of staff officers, corps officers, senior soldiers, junior soldiers, employees, friends, and a host of loyal Oriole and Raven fans. <laughs> you know, in reflecting on the last, uh, in, in reflecting in the last few days of the last uh, 12 years that Melinda has served our division, I was thinking she probably should be given a medal because she's had to live through many changes of leadership during her time, including four DCs, five DYSs, and countless Corps officers, and spent 12 summers at beautiful Camp Tomahawk. I first met uh, Melinda in Florida at camp where she was serving as a staff member of the conservatory staff that summer. I suppose it, uh, it, what they say is, is really true that you only start to know a person through what others have to say. In the past few days, I feel that I've just started to know who Melinda Ryan was and the impact that she had made on the soldiers and friends of the Maryland West Virginia Division. In or, so in order to reflect and to celebrate the promotion of glory for Melinda, I decided to share what many of our young people had to say through social media in just the past few days. These words are only a, a small representation and sampling of many others in our division showing their deep feelings and affection for what Melinda did and how she touched their life in just 12 short years. Dear Melinda, you're such a big inspiration in my life. I can't even describe how much I enjoyed you telling me to get my music right. <laughs> music is now a big part of my life because of you. I wouldn't even know how to play an instrument if it wasn't for you. You inspired me so much that I can't even describe how, I, how much I enjoy being with you how much I enjoyed being with you these past four years at Senior Conservatory. I will always love you forever, Melvin. Thank you, Melinda Ryan, for being an inspiration to my son, Jeremy Jackson. Your music and teaching will live through him, Sharon. Melinda Ryan, tonight I'm watching a Ravens preseason football game, which, by the way, they won against my Dolphins. I'll think of you all season and how you came to the U.S. not knowing anything about football, American football that is, but learned to love it and love the Ravens. We watched a lot of games together, including the Ravens Super Bowl win. We had high hopes for a better season this year. I hope they do just that for you. Go Ravens, Wendy. So where do I start off? I could say what you were, a daughter, a teacher, a sister, a friend, a mentor, a person that everyone could depend on for a helping hand. You were there through the good and through the bad. You supported us in everything we did. You were there to cheer us on at every event we had, at every cheerleading event, musical, singing, or band concert. To see you in the crowd felt like, more like a blessing it was a real honor. Maryland, West Virginia youth all look up to you. I wasn't really into band music, and every time I heard it, I felt like my ears were going to burst. <laughs> I actually had given up on even playing, and, and that probably hurt you a lot. Because like many people, you saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself. But you saw that I had a passion for more than just music. You saw that I had a passion for God and ministry. So you allowed me to use my passion within the division and became, and you became, and because you had a vision to bring more of the creative arts to life through just music, but dance and drama and art and everything else you could have thought of, you put me in a creative arts leadership position 
which has helped me to bring out my love for Christ through a creative vision. I wouldn't think I could do it half of what I do if it wasn't for you. You are a blessing and a true treasure. To me, you are family. I'm blessed to know you. And I will miss you, my friend, Sierra. Melinda, I spent all day typing, deleting, typing, deleting again, trying to find the words to express how I feel at this moment, to express how much you have and will always mean to me. I know you got to the pearly gates and God said, welcome, my friend, good and faithful servant, because you were a good and faithful to the very end. But I still can't handle it. You were my best friend. You were such an inspiration and influence in my life. You taught me that it doesn't matter how old you are, you are never too old to have fun. You taught me how to love music. You got me back into the brass music, even though it took a while to get me back into the groove. And you taught me how to love cats. Because, <laughs> and you got a cat coming back to Canada. Um, <laughs> but most importantly, you taught me that no matter what we face in life, we can always turn to God and he will get us through. You were the truest friend I could have ever asked for. You love God and people so, and it was evident by everything you did and how you lived. I am blessed to have met you and cultivated such an amazing friendship with you. But let's be honest, you were always family. Life with you was good, Mel, funny, Sad, joyful, loving. I remember the first time Winnie, Winnie is the daughter, saw you with your compression socks on and she thought your legs were fake and said, Minky, take off your legs. <laughs> I will never forget that day or how hard you laughed at the fact that she said, but also laughing at the fact that I was so incredibly embarrassed. I will always miss you, my dear friend, and you will always be in my heart, Rachel. No words for such an insp inspirational woman going away so quickly. You will be truly missed, Brendan. As I pick up my horn tonight for band practice, gratitude fills my heart. I wouldn't even be where I am today without Melinda's friendship. She's not only the one of my best friends, but she is my, was a mentor for me from a young age. I'm so grateful that she cared. She saw in me what I couldn't see in myself. That's, she pushed me and never let me give up. But beyond that, I'm grateful for the laughs and the tears and the hugs and the conversations that we shared. Melinda and is and always will be a, a huge part of my story, Rachel. Melinda was more than just a family friend. She was family. Today has been a really hard. I've been going through pictures and memories all day and I am very blessed to have had Melinda in my life. She could always put a smile on my face and she could always had a smile for others. Thank you for making such an impact on my life, Jacob. Words can not express our gratitudes. There's no such question uh, there's, no, there's no question that the Maryland West Virginia uh, Division has been blessed to have known Bandmaster Melinda Ryan, and we share with the Ryan family in their time of great loss. Thank you for allowing Me Melinda to take a journey south and spend her time with us. Let me close with the words from the musical Wicked. I've heard it said that people come into our lives for a reason bringing something we must learn, must learn. And we are led to those who help us most to grow. If we let them, well, I don't know about if I believe that's true, but I know who I am. I am today because I knew you. We have been changed for the good. Who can say if I've been changed for the better? But because I knew Melinda Ryan, I have been changed for the good. Melinda, we will miss you. But the Maryland West Virginia is a better place because we knew Melinda Ryan. God bless you.
just like to say my husband wrote that song. And hello, husband, I love you. He's watching in Georgia right now. <laughs> well, today, uh, we're not necessarily here for Melinda's benefit. She's gone home. But we want to honor her life and give support to her beautiful family, mother Betty, brother David, sister Diane, and her wonderful niece and nephew, Melissa and Darren, and all the family members. The three of us stand here today with one less golden girl, which is what we like to call ourselves. I'll let you determine who you think filled each role. <laughs> I will just say that we're missing our Sophia. Good afternoon. When I was 13 years old, I auditioned for the Citadel Band. I remember being nervous. Not only was the audition process intense, but rumor had it, there was another girl coming into the Corps who would be playing euphonium. <laughs> I thought, man, she must be really good to get right into the euphonium section. And yes, she was. Over the next few years, I realized what a force she was to be reckoned with. A monster musician, and every instrument she picked up, she played with confidence. A lyrical euphonium player, jazzy trombonist, and a fierce drummer. Through her, I learned how to play with energy, excitement, and enthusiasm. As a conductor, she would challenge us. She wasn't afraid of giving a section a dirty look if they played wrong, and in my case, I usually played too loud, so I got that a lot from her. She was firm yet funny at the same time. She brought out the best in people, both personally and musically, with her wit and humor. This is how I first met Melinda. During our friendship, I got to know her and her family, and they accepted me as one of their own. I have fond memories of trips to La Sea and Miss Betty Ryan's marshmallow cookies and drives around the harbor. It didn't take long to understand where her passion for music and zest for life came from. Her dad, Ray, was always humming a tune, and someone was always having a laugh or poking fun. Melinda had an amazing way of making fast friends with people of all ages wherever she met. She was often adopted by families, both in St. John's and her home in Baltimore. You could tell how important family was for her, and if she wasn't able to be with her own family, she would join others very naturally. <laughs> she fit in everywhere she went and always felt like the long lost sister, aunt, or cousin sitting around the table or going on family adventures. Years after Melinda and I took leaderships, leadership roles at the Corps, we traveled together teaching at different music camps through the States and in uh, Ontario. We became close as we shared our love for music with others. Everywhere we traveled, people would gravitate towards her. Her laugh and her wit was contagious, and it was hard not to smile, even if she was making fun of you, <laughs> which she did a lot of. She had a talent of making you feel a part of something greater than yourself, a very special gift. Since her passing last week, it has been evident the impact she's had on others. I have to admit it's been very hard emotionally to read the personal posts people from all over the world have shared, but it's a real testament to what a loyal and caring person she was. Thirteen years have passed since we've been close friends, but we've stayed in touch and visited. I will cherish the memories of our time together from this past Christmas, laughing until our bellies were sore with some of our dear friends. I feel privileged to have the opportunity to share in the celebration of her life today. She had such an impact on my life and those who are here. One such person is Jillian Sexton, a member of the group Twinners Are Winners, a group Melinda was an honorary member of. She says, I can't think of Melinda without thinking of a dozen people than a dozen more. She brought people together and created community all around her. Melinda made us fall in love with music and made us laugh while doing it. Many people like Jillian wanted to be here today to share their stories and speak of fond memories. I hope that by sharing my experience with you, you can all remember who Melinda was. And even though she's gone, she still lives through all of us. Every time we listen to a piece of music, every time we laugh, she is there. Her laughter, music, and positive spirit will live on in all of us. I, like Catherine, first met Melinda as a teenager. 
It's hard to look back at over 20 years and how you squeeze in 20 years of memories. Melinda became an instant friend, settling into her life at St. John Citadel. Her personality was magnetic. She became friends with everyone, creating humor and laughter wherever she went. Her laugh was one that would fill a room. There are many memories of songster retreats or music camps where Melinda would be the star in the skit. From the youngest to the oldest, her infectious personality kept everyone laughing. Melinda was always up for a bit of fun. Whether it was having a fake wedding at music camp or being a damsel in distress, where there was fun and laughter, it was known that Melinda was definitely the center of it. As years went by, this talented musician from the sea developed quite a name for herself. In the music camp years, she quickly became known as Animal for being such a rock star on the drums. Her passion for music and teaching young musicians was her gift. It was evident in her love for encouraging the young musical minds to do better, to never give up, and always use your musical gifts for the Lord. Each of us here today in some way has been impacted by Melinda. Her vibrant personality kept us laughing. Her musical gifts impacted young and old alike, and she was the true example of a woman of faith. I want to share just a brief little tribute from our friend Steve Noseworthy. Melinda, you leave behind a legacy of kindness, faith, love, and friendship. I find it hard to sum up in a couple of minutes how you remember someone. But I feel, as myself, it has been an honor and a privilege to have known Melinda, to have been blessed by her friendship. The laughs, the memories will live on. And I can easily say that Melinda Ryan touched all of our lives and that there is a piece of Melinda in each one of us. Wherever Melinda was, she left a legacy. Her legacy is not leaving something for people. It's leaving something in people, which is what she did in each one of us. Well, Melinda first entered our posse of friends here uh, at the church in 1995, and it's honestly hard to remember when she hasn't been there. Uh, there are countless stories to tell through the years, but I wanted to take time to share just how her impact uh, continued on once she left the island and moved to the States. And you heard already uh, a little bit of that uh, from Major Penn Hill. In 2005, Melinda started as the Divisional Music Director for the Maryland West Virginia Division. And I was already living in the States at the time and in, in, in the same Salvation Army Southern Territory, so we're able to see each other a lot at quite a, uh, quite a number of events. And so our friendship grew quite strong over the years that followed. And she was a gift through some pretty tough times in my life. <sighs> Girl. <sighs> if you followed her at all or read the outpouring on Facebook in recent days, you get a glimpse of just how incredible her ministry was. She was loved by all and was an amazing spiritual leader and mentor to so many young people in her division. One thing we keep reading and hearing is how much laughter surrounded her. I remember preparing a new fee skit in my living room in Georgia with her for the Fiener's retirement, just splitting our sides with all the jokes we were trying to put in while my British husband uh, just looked on in total confusion and not understanding what was happening. Or how at every, and this is for all the DMDs from uh, the Southern Territory watching here, um, how at every annual Territorial Music Committee meeting we'd all get, get together, she would stand and give her annual report on the division to the DMDs, cracking jokes throughout. And I was by her side laughing hysterically at everything and everyone else in the room just sat lost, kind of confused. I was like, ah! And I was the only one who got her sense of humor. Um, we were able to find laughter in everything. 
when I was by her side just over three weeks ago in Texas uh, when she had her heart attack. Um, when she woke up, I said, so, did you see the light? <laughs> and she said, no. Should I be worried? <laughs> and we just cracked up laughing. <laughs> she has no worry. Melinda also leaves behind her precious cat, Oriole, who I had a hard time warming up to after he kept trying to nest in my ponytail all night during a visit a few years back. But I can tell you one thing, though. Oriole has been silently pleading to all of us for years, saying, please take off this bow tie. It's embarrassing. <laughs> We're coming, Oriole. <laughs> During Melinda's time in the state, she made many friends, um, and they're watching today. But three in particular um, held a very special place in her heart. We already heard uh, words from Rachel. That's Rachel Riley. Also, Rachel Pruitt, and in a tribute, Rachel said, Melinda, when you got sick for the first time in 2013, it was scary. But the biggest thing I remember is your faith and your perseverance through it all. You knew God was in control, and you trusted him with your life. Major Cheryl Gillum, a very dear friend to Melinda, who's in the airport right now because she can't be here, but she's watching online. She writes, the imprints you made on our lives will remain forever. They will never go away. You will always be part of us. These three ladies in particular had a profound influence in Melinda's life and were integral part of their families. Melinda was part of my family as well. Uh, she would have loved my six-year-old Jamie's response after we sensitively told them last week of Melinda's passing. In all seriousness, he stopped and he looked and asked, when Auntie Melinda died, did her clothes drop off like Obi-Wan Kenobi's? <laughs> and my husband said, no, Auntie Melinda wasn't a Jedi. <laughs> so this is how we celebrate Melinda, through laughter and memories filled with joy. Our God is an awesome God, and his timing is perfect. My heart rejoices to know that she's in no more pain or illness. I'd like to think she's playing alongside my dad in the heavenly band and taking eternity worshiping our creator while fishing with her dad on the heavenly waters. You will be missed, our dear friend. We stand one less golden girl, but your memory will remain until we meet again.
What an amazing, an amazing woman. My name is Captain Jonathan Howell, and I currently serve as the Divisional Youth Secretary in the Maryland West Virginia Division. And I'm new. I'm only three months into it, and I gotta be honest, part of me wonders why am I honored to be here amongst amazing people celebrating such an amazing person that I've only had a small time to get to know. And I now know that it's because I play the trombone. <laughs> and if you know the trombone section, we always need at least one more. And ever since I've landed, I've been told that there's going to be 10 trombones in this band, and in the band Amazing Today. But I, I counted. Yeah, let's give them a hand. But as, as I counted, I'm, I'm only from Maryland, West Virginia, but I can only count to nine. And so I say to, to Nick Hillier, Nick, there's only nine trombones. I was told there's ten. We've got to come through. <laughs> Look at that. And Nick said, there's the tenth. There it is. There she is. She got us. And while Melinda has been a very faithful divisional music director in this wonderful division for 12 years, as you heard through these testimonies, that she didn't just teach music, but they testified that she also taught us to turn to God, and he will get us through, whatever moment that is. And so I encourage you at this moment, let's turn to God and to his word and open up to Psalm chapter 40. And some amazing words that I'm sure if Melinda could speak to the youth and to the young adults of the Maryland-West Virginia Division, she would say, live this out. Don't let this just be ink on paper. But live this out. Now I'll be reading from the NIV version. And I've been told that uh, NIV needs to stand for the Nufi interpreted version. But I can't start getting Southern up here. So unfortunately, the one I picked up says New International Version. So if you would, please bear with me. Psalm chapter 40, verses 1 through 10. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and he heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud in the mire. He set my feet on a rock and he gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods. Many, O oh Lord my God, are the wonders you have done. The things you planned for us, no one can recount to you. In fact, were I to speak and to tell of them, they would be too many to declare. Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but my ears you have pierced. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you do not require. Then I said, then she said, here I am. I have come. It is written about me in the scroll. I desire to do your will. O oh my God, your law is within my heart. I proclaim righteousness in the great assembly. I do not seal my lips, as you know, O Lord. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. I speak of your faithfulness and salvation. I do not conceal your love and your truth from the great assembly. Praise God for his word. We're going to continue our worship together and sing a couple of great songs of praise and worship. And um, as you know, Melinda was a great drummer, and the family has, uh, has done a dangerous thing today. And they've asked our drummer to really play it out uh, during this song. 
So uh, I pass that on to you as, as a word of warning and a celebration. Um, if you would like to stand in, in honor of Melinda and in praise to our God, would you please stand with me? And these are the days of Elijah Declaring the word of the Lord And these are the days of your servant Moses' righteousness being restored And though these are days of great trials Of famine and darkness and sorrow Still we are the voice in the desert Crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet call, so lift your voice, hear of Jubilee, out of Zion's hill, salvation comes. And these are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming as flesh. And these are the days of your servant, David, rebuilding a temple of praise. And these are the days of the harvest, the fields are white in the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name, sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the comes, bless the Lord. in love, rich in love, slow to anger, your name is great and your heart is kind, all your goodness I will keep on singing, ten thousand reasons for my heart to I lift them up. On that 
my time has come still my soul will sing your praise unending ten thousand years Promises, we say amen, amen. We see them. Monda, monda, monda. I looked at Monsa a few moments ago. I said, I can't believe it. I'm even crying to a band selection. I never thought it would happen. <laughs> I never thought it would happen. Uh, before I speak today, the sermon which I was asked to do, uh, Nan Betty did ask uh, yesterday evening, she said, when you get up, uh, if I want you to do something, so I will do that. And, and, and that's a word of, of thanks. Uh, on behalf of the family, and I know Commissioner Feener already alluded to it, but we certainly want to express our grateful uh, thanks to all. Um, I, I said even on Facebook yesterday, and those who know me well know speechless is not a word that's often used to describe me. <laughs> uh, but in this past week, we have certainly found ourselves speechless many times. And even today, to have uh, the worship team under the leadership of uh, Robbie and Susan Lee, great friends of Monda, to have uh, the band, I think it's about a 45-piece band here today. And under the leadership who was uh, the deputy or assistant, again, I'm not a band's person, I hope I got it right, uh, but deputy bandmaster when Monda was uh, the bandmaster here, how appropriate, how appropriate. And, and certainly when we look even at this platform to have our former territorial leaders, to have her divisional command and to have uh, the DY from her division, even three months new, uh, to have her last core officers well, in, on to have our own divisional commander who we're grateful for and support uh, from our division. And uh, the, the Golden Girls, my goodness. They're something, aren't they? They're something. I can see the four of them together. I would have liked to have been there for one of those parties, I guarantee you. I, I would have even come to a girls' night if that's what it would have took. I would have loved. But, but we do say a lot of all of what you see today in the last, since I've arrived in St. John's, the only thing that I've had to choose is my own underwear. And that's the truth. <laughs> that's the truth. Every detail, child care, cars, houses, food. They told me when to eat and what to eat. Uh, and we are eternally grateful. And to St. John's Citadel. And I know the core officers are here today. And certainly pass our appreciation along to yourselves and to all the core people for absolutely everything. We also have the ACs, Major Brian and Val Wheeler, who have been there to support. And just so many who have just been there. What can I do? How can I help? And on behalf of Nan Betty, on behalf of David and Diane, I'm also and Darren, and even today, might I say, on behalf of Melinda. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Even right back to the sound. Every aspect, she would just be eternally grateful for this great celebration. And before I share, I'm going to ask my pastor, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Eddie Vincent.
of prayer, asking God's blessing. Because uh, certainly as his servant today, I need it. So God bless. so grateful mm -hmm. for this very privilege that's ours. Mm -hmm. We don't deserve to be able to do this, but thanks to your son Jesus who came mm -hmm. and died on the cross of Calvary, he opened up the passage so we could thank come you. into your presence in a very personal way. Mm -hmm. And we thank you for that. Yes. And Lord, as we are here today celebrating the life of Melinda, Lord, we thank you for her. And we realize as we have listened to the those who have spoken about her and the influence she's had on their lives, how she has brought so many people into a relationship with you and into your presence. And today, Lord, in a very unique way, she brings all of us into your holy presence. And we know you are here. Now, Lord, as we sit under the ministry of your word, we thank you for Captain Brent. Thank you for his life. And as he speaks to us, the word that you have laid on his heart this day. We pray the anointing of your spirit on him, and we pray that through him you will speak to our hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Bless you. Thank you. Well, can you hear me? Can you see me? <laughs> You're doing well. Maybe if you've met Mon the Rhine at one time or another, you might have asked the question, so Melinda, where are you from? And more than likely, you got the response. One, two, three, last C, that's we. Who do we hate? Beaver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She'd like this. And, and hate had no H on it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if you were in one of Monda's bands or, or songster groups or any group that she was giving leadership to, I wouldn't be surprised if you heard the statement, to be early is to be on time. To be on time is to be late, and to be late is not acceptable. Well, Melinda, you certainly weren't late. You were far too soon for many of our certainly earthly likings. But have already been said, there's not a question in my mind, and even as a fan, we are here today at God's perfect time. God's ordained timing. And as I considered uh, what I might say, I was asked to share the sermon. And already we've had tributes and we've heard what Melinda loved and what the impact she had. And there was a lot of F words like friends and family, fellowship and food and, and, and all of these wonderful things that Melinda loved. But certainly there's one other F word that have already come through and there'd be no way to truly celebrate her life today without looking at her faith. The faith was the foundation, was the rock on which everything else stood on foundation to life. So certainly we'd have to take a moment to look to God's word, to consider our faith and even look in each of our own lives and ask ourselves maybe where our faith is, even during this most difficult time. Maybe you wouldn't be surprised when I considered what I might speak on or what scripture I might focus. I started to go to the Psalms. The psalmist David, a musician himself, there were some 55 psalms that were addressed, the heading said, to the director of music. Some translation says to the chief musician. Maybe in good Salvation Army fashion today, we could even have it addressed to the bandmaster. And as I read through so many of these psalms, I, I, my heart and my soul just magnetized towards Psalm 40. And Captain Howell a few moments ago read these words to us and it, it started with the psalmist in verse 1 saying, I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and He gave me a place to stand. You see, the psalmist here was giving his testimony, so to speak, his own personal experience. Now, the psalmist, like Melinda Ryan and so many of us, had a legacy and a heritage of faith. Melinda is about a fourth, if not fifth, generation salvationist. 
She's got a legacy of faith. But let me tell you something. As the psalmist, Melinda Ryan had more than a legacy. Melinda Ryan had an experience. She had a personal faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And after the psalmist describes his own testimony, he makes a statement that in, in encompassing and describing his faith, he says, and he put a song in my mouth, or some translation says a heart, a hymn of praise to our God. And I believe if I had to summarize Melinda's faith, even as a musician, as a bandmaster today, it might be appropriate even to describe Melinda's faith as a song in her heart. Melinda had a song in her heart. She had deep personal faith. Paul in Ephesians 5 and 19 says, Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. And that is exactly what Melinda done. Her life was filled with joy and laughter. We heard about it today. I mean, if you were having a bad day, a good person to call or text or talk to would be Melinda. She brought joy. She brought laughter. Yes, in a world that is filled with so much hatred. Melinda Ryan had a song of love. In a world filled with so much grief and sorrow, Melinda Ryan's life was a song of joy. In a world filled with turmoil and fighting, Melinda Ryan's life was a song of peace. Let me tell you, all you had to do was go to a Ryan family gathering. We're just like any other family, tit for tats, and this one and that one talking to this, and all of a sudden she'd roll. Now, boys, I never come home for this. <laughs> now, give it up. She was the peacemaker. She had a song of peace. My friends, Melinda Ryan had something more than religion. She had a relationship. She had a relationship with God and thus it impacted every other relationship with everyone else. And that brings me to a point here today. Melinda Ryan lived her song of fate out loud. Now, Melinda wouldn't have been the one who was going to jump over the pew or going to be shouting, hey, men's or hallelujahs. But friends, it's not how we jump on Sunday, but how we walk from Monday to Saturday. Now, nothing wrong with a little jump. That's some joy too. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but Melinda Ryan lived her fate out loud. She didn't. A few years back, Maybe you've seen there was a donation uh, for blood appeal. And the slogan that they used about your blood was, It is in you to give. Melinda Ryan's faith and song that was in her heart, she looked at what she had as something to give to somebody else. And many of you, some who I've talked to here today, not just youth of all ages, we heard it from Baltimore and the Maryland Division. So many people today have a song in their heart because they encountered Melinda Ryan. She lived her faith out loud, so to speak. The psalmist said after talking about his testimony and describing it, he said, many will see and fear the Lord and put their trust in Him. And many today have put their trust in God because of Melinda's influence and example. The psalmist said, I will proclaim your saving acts in this great assembly. I will not seal my lips. I do not hide your righteousness in my heart. In other words, what he had in his heart was not just for him. What Melinda Ryan had in her heart was not just for her. I speak of your faithfulness and your saving help. I do not conceal your love and your faithfulness from this great assembly. You see, she lived out her faith through her actions and her words. She embodied the Salvation Army mission of saving souls, growing saints, and serving suffering humanity. She embodied the great commission of going to make disciples of all nations. We went to, my, it was a St. Martin or St. Thomas a few years back. And we went into this little church. We love visiting churches when we travel. And myself and Melissa and Dave and Maxine went in. And there was a piano and there was a corps officer. So we started singing. And they said, what's your name? He said, I'm David Ryan. Ryan. 
We had a bandmaster here a few months ago, Melinda Ryan. We said, that's my sister, that's my aunt. She had taken a team down to one of these islands on a mission trip. You see, her influence was all over this world. A little girl from Lassie, Newfoundland. She lived her fate out loud. Melinda was redeemed for a reason. Melinda was converted to a cause. Melinda was saved to serve. She wore this uniform with pride and she lived what it represented. We had to smile just after we got the news. The paramedic came in. <laughs> I said, we have some dear, very difficult news for you as a family tonight. We've just pronounced Melinda dead. And of course, yes, there was raw emotion, and Nan and Betty went, Oh my goodness, she hasn't got her Salvation Army uniform. <laughs> Not an Army family, are we? <laughs> oh my, she hasn't got her Salvation Army uniform. Well, she got one. But let me tell you, no piece of clothes ain't going to ever get you in heaven. But living what it represents, a righteous life will. And she embodied, she embodied sacramental living. Her life was a living sacrifice unto the Lord. And thus that brings us great comfort even in these days. You see, we've heard today about how songs were placed in so many hearts. We heard, and I thank Major for reading out so many of the testimonials from the youth and the people of the division. That was their experience. People put their trust in God because of her. People seen in themselves what they couldn't see until Melinda identified it. There was a saying once that said, don't write your name in the sand, the waves will take it away. Don't make your mark in the sky because the wind will blow it away. But make your mark on people's hearts. And there it will stay. There it will stay. And for years to come, Melinda Ryan's mark will be left on the lives of so many. But maybe you've seen the title of my sermon today. Some have already mentioned it to me when the music fades. Back in the early 1990s, there was a song that was written, and many of you probably know it. We've sung it as worship. We've heard it played through the records. When the music fades and all is stripped away. So she had a song in her heart. She, she shared this song and, and placed a song in the hearts of so many others. But what about when the music fades? What about when all is stripped away? What about when June 25th, 2013 happens? We're all living a normal life and the phone rings. Melinda's in the hospital. Stroke after stroke. Calling for the family. We'll never forget. We were in St. John's for Congress. Putting Nan and Betty on a plane to go down because they needed the next of kin to make the next decisions. And we prayed, and we prayed for a miracle. And what did God do? He gave us a miracle. And even today with our reality, we cannot forget the miracles of God days gone by. God is still a God of miracles. And whatever God has done, God still can do. And we praise God for that. We had a miracle. But even when she came out, her right side and, and her speech, and, and some of us said, will she ever play again? Will she ever sing again? Will she ever take that baton and lead the band again? I mean, the music had faded. It looked like everything was going to be stripped away. So would, would, would Melinda lose the song in her heart? Would Melinda's faith quiet down and maybe not be so loud lived out in her life? Would she not have the same passion to impart that song in the lives of others? December 31st, 2013, after she had received nothing less than a miracle, Melinda's Facebook status was this on the last day of 2013. 2013, the year of the stroke or the year of the miracle? The miracle year it is. 
The miracle year it is. She did not lose her song. Maybe some of you have seen there's a songster piece. There's three ladies including Melinda. And after her stroke, after all this ordeal, three of them I believe in their home core was singing one Sunday morning. And it comes to the course where it says Christ is all. Yes, all in all. My Christ is all in all. Melinda never lost a song in her heart. Melinda never ever lost a passion, even as the psalmist in his own trials and tribulations to impart a song in the hearts of others. But yet today we might even consider what Paul said in Philippians 1.21. Paul said, for me to live is Christ." For Melinda Ryan to live, it was Christ. And because of that, to die is gain. <laughs> to die is gain. And yes, for us as a family, last Tuesday in Panorama, B.C., we had just had a game of phase 10. And might I add, Melinda won the game. <laughs> she didn't mind telling you that either. <laughs> And for us as a family, for us as a family, I'm including everybody here today, who knew and loved her, the music faded. Somebody dear to us in the human sense was stripped away. And we could allow that today to take the song out of our hearts. But Melinda Ryan would not have that. The Word of God offers us something much more because when she left our presence, she was present with the Lord. We do not let to let our hearts be troubled. We can trust in God because He has gone to prepare a place for us. A place that Melinda already knows the reality of. Paul in 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13 says, We do not mourn like those who have no hope. Now how sad, I could imagine today the song being out of our heart if we had to look at this casket and on Friday in the sea if we had to say goodbye Melinda. Melinda, I'll never see you again, but thanks be to God we've got something more than that. We've got a greater hope that one day if we're true and faithful, not perfect. Melinda Rhyme wasn't perfect. Melinda Rhyme was faithful. And God don't ask for perfection today. If not, I wouldn't be up here, I guarantee you. But my aim, my desire is to be faithful. And that was Melinda's desire. And thus, even in the most difficult time, for this person of faith, we need not steal the song of our hearts as difficult as death can be. And a memory that I will never, ever forget is the paramedic came in and pronounced Melinda dead with the family. We stayed up for a few hours and we waited till it was time to call family back here because of the time difference. And I remember finally we were going to try to get some sleep and Nan Betty was in one bed and Mia Mosa was over in another bed in the same room. And then, Betty, you'll never know the impact when we had just turned out and going to try to go to sleep. Nan Betty always play, prays out loud. You can hear her all over the house, actually. <laughs> and she turned her head in just after dealing with all that we dealt with. And I wondered if she would pray or not or what she would say. I was listening with keen entrance. And Nan Betty opened her prayer with, Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. God, you are so good to me and my family. The song wasn't gone out of her heart. Her heart was broken. But the song wasn't gone because Nan Betty knows she got a hope. One day she'll be reunited with Melinda and Pop Ryan who's gone on before. And that's what has given us a song. That's what's given us joy. That's what's given us a peace that passes all human understanding. Melinda Ryan has fought the fight. She has finished the race and most importantly, she has kept the faith. And in the end result, that is all that matters. And in a moment, we're going to sing a song. And the worship team is going to lead us in that song that reminds us that when the music fades and all is stripped away, 
we can come back to the heart of worship where it's all about Him. Unless number of weeks, there's no secret that Melinda's heart was not strong. It was no secret to us as a family that she was a very, very sick woman. And on Tuesday evening, as much as we knew it would come probably sooner than we wanted, we were not prepared for what would happen when 10.30, the game of phase 10 was over, and by 11 o'clock she was present with the Lord. But I remember when the paramedics came and they brought the defibrillator and we had worked on her right until they got and they put a defibrillator. Maybe you've had this experience yourself. And the defibrillator was placed on her and we would hear the saying, we were in the room, analyzing, analyzing, no shock advised, no shock advised. Analyzing, analyzing, analyzing. No shock advice. And that went on for a number of times until they pronounced her dead. But I've often thought if that machine could pick up a song in her heart. <laughs> if that machine could have picked up the living presence of Jesus Christ. That machine would have said, Jesus is found. <laughs> Jesus is found. And at the end, when all was being stripped away, Melinda's degrees on the wall didn't mean a whole lot. All oh, whatever money or lack thereof in the bank didn't make a difference. What her house was, what her car was, all that mattered when everything else was stripped away, when her family couldn't save her, when her friends couldn't save her, Jesus was there to save her. Even when I walk to the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You see, when the music fades and all is stripped away, and it will for every one of us, all that will matter is if we have Jesus. And Melinda Ryan had Jesus, so today we salute her as a faithful soldier of the Salvation Army, but most of all a faithful soldier of Jesus Christ. And I want to leave you today and leave myself with the question, do you have a song in do you have a song in your heart? Do you have this joy, this peace, this love? This was not a gift. This was not just a song from Melinda Ryan. This was a song. Jesus said, I have come to bring life into the full. And friends, it's for the whosoever. And that's why Melinda dedicated her life to putting a song in the hearts of so many. Maybe there's those here you once had a song. But your music has faded. Maybe this, what a greater testament to Melinda's life than even at this service of celebration, putting that song of faith back into your heart. And finally, the greatest thing we can do now on this side of eternity for Melinda's honor is to live our faith out loud. As bands people, as worship team, as soldiers and officers, as followers of Jesus Christ, the greatest thing we can do, as Melinda has done, is to impact the lives of others. Melinda Ryan is safe in the arms of Jesus. And many more will know that reality because of her life, her music, and her ministry. I pray that God would use me. I pray that God would use you. And as we sing this song today, I believe Melinda would have us align our own lives. Look in our own hearts between us and God as only we can do. And question when the music fades and all is stripped away, I'm coming back to the heart of worship where it's all about you. Well done, Melinda. We love you. We will not say goodbye. We will join her in singing as she's never sung before in the angel choir. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. God bless you, team. Take these moments 
with you and the Lord because when we slip out into eternity, just as Melinda has already done, our spouse won't be standing with us. Our family and friends won't be in that one-on-one -on -one meeting. It will be between you and God and me and God. And I pray when the music fades and all is stripped away, we will hear as Melinda have heard because of the testimony she's left, well done, thou good and faithful servant, well done. When the music fades, all is stripped away, and I simply come, longing just to bring something that's of worth, that will bless your I'll bring you more than a song For a song in itself Is not what you have required You search much deeper within Though the way things appear You're looking into my heart I'm coming back the heart of worship it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the thing I made it it's all about you it's all about you King of endless words, no one could express how much you deserve. Though I'm weak and poor, all I have is yours, every single breath. I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within, through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. About you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. When it's all about you, it's all about you. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Well, I think God <clears throat> has blessed us, and He, Jesus, has been honored and glorified in this meeting this afternoon. Do you believe that? Give to Jesus glory. We'll stand now as the band plays for us the selection, promote it to glory.
well done, servant of God. I have a, a message from the chief of the staff, Commissioner uh, Brian Peddle, and he wishes that Betty, you and your family have this uh, message. I won't read it in total, uh, but I'll make sure you get it. He says, our hearts join with many around the Citadel and around the world as you celebrate the life of a great child of God who used her musical abilities to influence and impact many people for the kingdom. That is so so true. Now, this would be a very sad day if this were the end of it all. But here's what we know for sure. Death does not have the final word. We shall meet again. Here's what Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life, and she that believes in me, though she be dead, she shall rise and live again. Hallelujah. When eventually, tomorrow, this shell, this body, is put in the ground, we can all walk away not saying goodbye, but rather, so long. And we will see you and laugh again in the morning. Thank you, Melinda Ryan, for the incredible impact you have had on the lives of so many. Till we meet again. Let's conclude the service, shall we? by singing together when we all get to heaven. Now that's real time for Melinda. We're still working through it by faith, but it's real time for her. She's experiencing the presence of Jesus in real time. Let's sing together. I don't know how many verses there are, but we're gonna sing every verse. All right, all right.
Just to remind you that immediately following uh, this service, there will be refreshments served in the gym for any and all who would like to come and participate and perhaps share a few minutes of fellowship with the Ryan family and friends. So please feel free to uh, join us there and uh, to further perhaps uh, express your condolences to the family. We'd love to see you. Will you pray with me, please? O oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You've set your glory above the heavens and have ordained praise from the lips of your children. And it's our delight today to sing praise to your name, to give you thanksgiving for allowing us to share some days of real inspiration with Melinda Ryan. We thank you for her life, we thank you for her influence, and we pray now, as we have celebrated that life, that you will give the family and friends encouragement and your sustaining grace and an awareness of your presence and your love for them right to the very end of this physical life, where once again they will be reunited with Melinda and with all those yeah. that have gone on before us. You, Bless us and use us to bring glory and honor to your name, for we make this prayer in the strong name of Jesus. Amen.